In today's video, we're going to talk about my favorite aspect of the supercharged 3800 E85 injected Pontiac Fiero, and that is, how does it manage to launch off the line so damn hard? As you just saw, it launches like it was hooked up to a catapult like a jet on an aircraft carrier. But obviously it's not, so what's the deal? How does it do that? Well, it's not exactly the lightest car on the road, but compared to something like a Dodge, Challenger, Red Eye, Hellcat, that's a lot of words, and that thing is actually kind of a pig. But it's pretty cool if you can get traction. By the way, it just so happens that through the years I have raced a couple of Dodge products with the supercharged Fiero, and I do have some footage. The first one is of an older Dodge product. And the next one is of a more modern big black Mopar. we almost had him but by the end of the track he did edge us out by just a little bit even a 2024 mustang dark horse which is a pretty sweet car weighs about a thousand pounds more than the fast little bastard and that's what i call the supercharged fiero affectionately and by the way recently we did happen to race a mustang that was pretty modified it was a cool car and a decent driver and here's some footage of that So secret number one to why the supercharged Fiero is so quick off the line is because of its relatively light weight. And I would like to do a little bit of surgery here in the near future to see if I can remove about 200 pounds. And I think that would quicken her up just a little bit. Secret number two is that although the supercharged Fiero has only a V6 engine, it is on the larger side coming in at 3.8 liters. As a point of reference, back in the day, the Fieros came with a 92 horsepower four cylinder 2.5 liter engine, which was pretty much a dog. And if you wanted the hot ticket, they offered a fire breathing, not really, 2.8 liter, 135 horsepower V6, which back in the day was a lot more fun. So the V6 engine that is one liter larger at 3.8 liters versus the 2.8 liter stock V6s is definitely secret number two to getting this thing off the line. The next secret is boost with a capital B and as mentioned the 3800 is supercharged and the supercharger's purpose is to add boost. which effectively makes the engine act a lot bigger than it is. So the Fiero's current engine is out of a 97 Buick Regal GS. In stock, that engine has about seven and a half pounds per square inch of boost, but this engine has been modified, so it's now putting out about 12 pounds per square inch of boost. This means that the Fiero engine has 12 additional pounds per square inch of boost above and beyond what the atmosphere provides for boost over normal or naturally aspirated engines. Wait, what, the atmosphere actually provides boost to our engines? That's correct, the atmosphere, which is all around us at all times, is actually a very deep pool of air that extends at least six miles straight up and actually quite a bit more. Like all mass, all of that air that is stacked up miles high has weight and it's pressing on us at all times at about 14.7 pounds per square inch in all directions, even though you can't feel it. That 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure is pushing air into all naturally aspirated engines during their intake stroke. And since the Fiero has an additional 12 pounds of boost, it actually has 26.7 pounds of pressure cramming air into the engine during its intake stroke. And all of that pressure has tricked the 3.8 liter engine into believing it's actually a 6.9 liter. 
The extra boost is created by running a smaller supercharger pulley which spins the supercharger faster, and the E85 fuel which offers additional cooling and octane benefits over pump gas which allow the engine to create all of that torque and horsepower without damaging knock. Because of the fact that E85, which many call liquid intercooling, is plentiful here in the Midwest part of the United States, thank you very much, this particular setup does not require a separate intercooler. So secret number three to making the Fiero launch like a Banshee is by taking advantage of good old fashioned Eaton Root style supercharged boost, which dramatically increases the engine's torque output. The next key ingredient has nothing to do with the Fiero's engine. It's the type of transmission that's being used. There is a lot of internet banter about which transmission is best, typically with guys pushing the manual transmissions, and they are the best for road course tracks and things like that. But if launching the car hard off the line is a top priority, the automatic transmission has the distinct advantage of being able to significantly multiply the engine's torque. This torque multiplication happens inside the transmission in two separate ways. The first way is fairly easy to understand, similar to the gears on a bicycle. The engine's torque gets multiplied by taking the first gear ratio times the final gear ratio, and in the Fiero's transmission that equals about eight and a half to one torque multiplication, minus losses for friction, of course, and manual transmissions operate very similar to that. However, as I alluded to, automatic transmissions have a second way of magnifying the torque from the engine, and that happens inside the torque converter where there's an impeller, and there's a turbine, hydraulic fluid, and there's centrifugal force, and a little bit of physics magic, and somehow, with all of that mixed together, it multiplies the torque by another factor of two, and that is huge for launching the Fiero. The truth is, I don't completely understand exactly how the torque converter works. I just know that it does. If you wanna know more about exactly what's going on inside the torque converter, Check out this video by Thomas Schwenke. He goes into specific detail and will tell you exactly what's going on. That brings us to the final secret sauce ingredient that greatly aids in the Fiero's launch. Most cars have a weight distribution that put the majority of the weight on the front tires. On the Fiero, the majority of the weight is directly over the drive tires in the rear. Having the engine located in the back of the Fiero is definitely the most important design characteristic that allows it to hook up virtually anywhere. The Fiero has 57% of its weight over the drive tires versus 43% for that Dodge Hellcat Red Eye. Because of this, with a set of Mickey Thompson Street ETs and a couple of small tweaks to the Fiero on just about any old random unprepped city street, the Fiero can pull the front end off the ground. Because of the fact it is of a mid-engine design, I do like to poke a little bit of fun at my Corvette friends. Occasionally, I like to say that the Fiero is really the C8 prototype because I'm pretty sure when Chevrolet was actually designing the first mid-engine Corvette, they probably went through all of their records on the Fiero to see what lessons they could learn to make sure they don't repeat them when they came up with this car. For the record, the Fiero really is the first mid-engine GM sports car. Yep, he beat me, but if you take a look at this replay, you'll see how close my $5,000 Fiero actually came to beating the $100,000 C8. And besides, I don't care because I got a new personal best. Well, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please tap that thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. And most of all, thanks for watching.